Well, greetings, people of the internet. Unky Joe here, Unky Joe's Playhouse. Today, we're going to get right to it. I'm going to show you how to back up your Hyper-V virtual machines to a Synology NAS. That's right. We're going to use Synology and we're going to back up all of our Hyper-V virtual machines today. I'm going to show you how easy it is to set it up, install it, and get it configured to back up your Hyper-V machines. Now, the two hypervisors I'm still running in my lab are Hyper-V, it's my primary hypervisor, and Proxmox. So I've got a lot of machines created here with Hyper-V and I want to get backups of them so that if something happens, I've, you know, I've got some recovery. And it'll show you one of the main reasons that I tell my clients to purchase a Synology NAS to run their small, medium business. So let's get started right now. Now, one of the reasons I got the Synology NAS was the, the fact that it has some excellent software built into it. If we come over here to my, uh, this is my, actually my production Hyper-V server. This is where I run all my phone system, my Docker server, my management server. I have a web server running Plesk. I have a couple of domain controllers. I have a couple of Windows 11 virtual machines, uh, Windows 7 virtual machine. Now I could just use something like Veeam. I could just export these virtual machines, that kind of thing. But what makes it, what, what makes the Synology nice is it'll back up all of this stuff for you. So I'm going to bring up my Synology uh, disk station 1621 and we'll log into this and we'll see if we can't figure out how to set up some backups. So very important if you want to move stuff around or you know restore something later if you have a catastrophe happen. I cannot impress enough uh, on, on you how to have, uh, that you should have good backups, I should say. So I've already installed Hyper Backup and I use it uh, and I recommend you do too. This is, you know, people complain about the, the, the cost of the Synology NAS and that their hardware is underpowered. And I tend to agree with that. But you're also paying for the, the great software that Synology makes. One of those great pieces of software is Active Backup for Business. So I'm going to launch that. I've already had it loaded. Uh, it'll allow you to back up PCs, servers, workstations, you name it. What we're going to focus on today is virtual machines. Now, right now, uh, you can back up VMware vSphere Microsoft, or Microsoft Hyper-V. So I don't have one in here. I'm going to go ahead and add one. So I'm going to tell it to uh, add one. So click on add. And the server address is going to be, we can either put the Hyper-V uh, the, or the uh, machine name in here, which is, uh, I think it's a Dell 720. Let's find out. Let's go over to that machine and see what I did call it. Yeah, it's a Dell 720. So come back here. I should be able to do it this way. Um, we're going to use the Adama account and we're going to enter that super secret password. Now you'll need, um, you'll need an account with domain privileges. We're going to use the, uh, we're going to use, uh, why, we might as well, uh, let's just keep it at HTTP. Now this is telling you right here. Okay. Don't have any idea what that's for. So let's just try it like this, see if it finds the device and is able to load it. All right, so it's uh, checking everything out. So 
So it failed, and it says permission to die. Uh, oh, probably because we need to use the fully qualified domain or the domain name. So UJP slash Adama. Let's try that again. See if we have any luck. Well, that's good. That part was successful. We'll see if the others pass. All right, so it looks like it's all good. Now, keep in mind the domain account I'm using has domain admin privileges. You can click on this information uh, to learn about the required services of Microsoft Hyper-V. I just make my life easy and use the domain administrator account. You may want to lock it down to a more or less an account with fewer permissions on it. So I'm going to click on done. And it's uh, just going out and loading now. And I'm going to click on close. Now it should go out there and give me a list of all the Hyper-V machines running on this server. And what we'll do is attempt to back one up. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So I guess it's going to go out and it's going to uh, create a list of space uh, out there I don't know let's see task list Hyper-V retrieving status information of hypervisor okay so let's say if I want to back up 3CX I'm going to create a task and I'm going to back up 3CX and I'm going to call this uh, 3CX backup I guess. Next. And then it's asking uh, where, what shared folder we want to use as the backup destination. And I'm going to just use the active backup for business folder. That should be fine. Okay, the following settings were previously configured. Cannot be changed for different settings. Please create a task in the new destination. So compression and encryption at destination are both set to no. I'm going to click on next. Um, maximum number of concurrently backed up devices. We'll leave that as two. Um, I don't know what all these are, so we can... So we can... Uh, enable transfer compression. It is suggested to enable data transfer compression on a slow network to reduce the time of the backup. Application aware backup uses VSS. Um, and um, we can enable data transfer encryption as well. Uh, let's see, Hyper-V data store usage detection. We have advanced settings. Okay, so we can set up a script for the individual. Um, I'm going to wonder, I'm, I kind of wonder if maybe we ought to enable application aware, but I'm just going to leave it set at, at the defaults for now. We'll click on next. And uh, it says it's successful. And we'll click on next. So that's the creation of the task. Now I'm just going to leave this as a manual backup for now. And I'm going to keep uh, 10 versions. Uh, we'll just do, we'll just do five. We'll just keep five versions. That should be fine. Click on next. The username we're going to use to, uh, for local restoriz uh, for restoration privilege. Uh, can I select? I'm going to select Adama as well. Oh, these are local users. Let's see what it says about domain users. Uh, let's select Adama as well. Okay. Yeah, that should work. Click on done. And that'll create a task. And then we'll tell it, go ahead and back it up now. And we can monitor the task from here, or we can monitor it from the overview screen as well. 
and it tells you it's backing up 3CX from the task, 3CX backup. So if we come here to the tasks now, we can see that a separate task has been created for 3CX. And uh, it shows uh, it's now starting to populate and tell us how much space is taken up. So we're going to let this run, uh, see how long it takes. And uh, when it's done, we'll come back and talk about it some more. So we've let some time pass. And if I come back to the task list now, you'll see that the backup was successful. I can click on details and it'll tell me uh, the size of the backup, uh, uh, where its location is. I can go look at the log file and you can see everything worked out just fine. So uh, let's do another one. Let's, uh, let's back up our domain controller number two. So if we uh, come here, we create task. And we'll call this uh, DC02 backup. Now I can come back later and automate these, you know, put them on a schedule. But for now, I'm just going to. I'm just going to go through and set it up manually. Uh, again, active backup for business. I can change all these later. I do want to enable an application aware backup. I'm going to try that this time. Um, I'm not going to uh, do data transfer encryption. I'm going to accept those settings. It's successful for the post pre backup. I'm just going to do manual next. Uh, I'm going to enable uh, five versions just in case. Click on next and uh, I'm going to change this to Adama being able to be a uh, person who can restore this. And uh, click on done. And it should ask me if I want to back it up now. And there you go. It's started. And uh, again, we'll come back when, when, it, when it's done. All right, so you can see some time has passed and uh, I've got everything uh, backed up. It tells you the backup size here. Um, I've created tasks. I don't, I don't understand clearly how the tasking works. So I created a task for each individual virtual machine. I probably could have done this a different way. And once I wrap my head around how to do this, I may come back and show you again how to do uh, tasks uh, for your virtual machine backups. But I just did a one for one. I created a task for each backup. And as you can see, I had no issues whatsoever getting the virtual machines backed up and they're they're now in a good state. Uh, and I just, I do these manually. You can, we could go into the task. We can edit any of these tasks if we wanted to and create a scheduled backup of them. So that's where the maybe one task to do all of the backups of all the VMs would be a better way to do this. But again, I'm learning as we go. The other thing I can do now is do a backup of a physical server. So I've got my DC01, which is on a uh, an HP thin client. I've got Prometheus, which is uh, running a server operating system, as you know. And then I've got a couple of other physical servers that I'm going to add to this as well as time goes on. So this one piece of software right here more than justifies, in my way of thinking, the cost of a Synology NAS. You know, a lot of people are going to disagree with me. They're going to say, Unky Joe, they're overpriced, underpowered. Okay. Fair enough. They are underpowered. I don't think they're overpriced. This is just one piece of software in the Synology suite of software that you get that makes this server or makes these boxes really indispensable. Now, one major problem I have with this is it doesn't back up virtual machines on Proxmox or XCPNG. It will do, you know, VMs on. Uh, VMware vSphere and Hyper-V. So maybe we can talk to the folks at Synology and get them to support Proxmox. But there, there are other ways to skin the cat, as they say, to do a Proxmox backup. And I'll be sharing those as time goes along. But this one piece of software right here, in my way of thinking, justifies the cost of a Synology NAS, at least for the clients that I do business with. 
Yeah, so there you go. Uh, yet another reason to own a Synology NAS. I just cannot tell you the the value you're getting for the money you spend on that. That backup application alone could have been $1,000, $1,500. I've paid as much as that for backup software before to backup virtual machines. So now there are other ways to backup your VMs under Hyper-V, but we're focused on Synology today. So, you know, if you run a home or small business, uh, I mean, you just can't go wrong with the Synology NAS. Well, we hope you found the video entertaining and informative as always. If you did, give us a thumbs up down below and leave your comments in the comments section. Subscribe if you're not already a subscriber and click that notification bell to be notified of new videos when they come out. Donations are accepted and appreciated. PayPal, Patreon, the YouTube join function. And you can simply go to our uh, Unky Joe's Playhouse.com, U-N-K-Y, Joe's Playhouse.com. And all of our social media links are there, so you can find us there, including on Discord, where we spend a lot of time together, me and the me and the guys. we got a posse of people over there we hang out with. And I try to do like a general chat on uh, Saturday afternoons, uh, time allowing. So uh, come over there and take a look and see if you like what you see. Uh, there's no charge for Discord membership. So please don't forget to come back and see us. And don't forget we'll see all of you on the other side.